grade 12s, we are working on a theory lesson today and we are going to be looking at network technology. So if you want to take notes, I suggest you go and grab a pen and paper because it might be useful. So in today's lesson, we are going to discuss a WAN, which is a wide area network. And what is a WAN? It is a wide area of computers that are spread over a large geographical area like cities, countries, and continents. Unlike a LAN, remember, is a local area network, and that is spread over a short distance like a building or a classroom, etc. So, And there are very many ways um, of connecting LANs together. Remember that that is called media. And the media are cables, satellite, radio waves, and microwave. So now... What is the purpose of a WAN? It is to facilitate communication between users over long distances, to share centralized data sources, and to connect LANs together. Now, an example of a WAN could be a banking network. You know that there are banking net, there's Standard Bank right across the country, or NetBank, or APSA, or any such bank. And you can go to any little ATM in any little town and you can withdraw money. That is a very good example of a WAN. And the biggest example of a WAN is the internet. And in actual fact, grade 12s, the internet is more of a GAN. And a GAN is a global area network. So now let's look at the internet. What is the internet? It is a worldwide computer network that consists of computers and networks that are linked using phone lines, satellites, microwave, and undersea cables so that they can communicate and share resources. Now, the internet has improved our lives in a huge way. Technology has approved, improved our lives in a huge way. And it's had a huge impact on how we communicate, bank, shop, and interact with each other. Time and distance, grade 12s, doesn't matter anymore. I can send an MMS or an SMS to any friend anywhere in the world, and it's a lot cheaper than using a phone call. So now let's see how it's improved our lives. It's improved our lives via communication, commerce. Businesses now have the world at their feet if they want to advertise globally, okay, by using the internet. We have social networking like Facebook. We can connect and share things with anybody in the world. And the same goes with our web blogs and our video logs, which we've touched on in previous lessons. So now, one thing that's come out of this new technology is something called grid computing. And it's probably not something we are going to use. It's mostly used by um, scientists or um, analysts that need to analyze a lot of data. And what grid computing is, it is a large number of computers that are shared um, to use the same, to use their resources to save a problem. Um, so what grid computing does is it looks around and it looks for computers that are actually not working and it uses their power, their processing power, um, to process things like analyzing data or financial information, etc. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of grid computing? It's a cost-effective solution, so you don't actually have to go and buy computers. You can use computers that are not being used. It can save problems that need an enormous amount of processing power, and it saves money, like I said before, by using the power of idle computers. Now, the disadvantages is you need to have a fast network between the computers to make it effective. And those computers may not be fast enough. And then the computers might be affected by malware. Remember what malware is, grade 12s? It is anything that, it is software that can harm your computer. So now, another thing that's come out of this technology is government internet services. Now there are lots of things we can do online. We can pay our TV licenses, we can file our tax returns, etc. So let's see what they've set up for us online. We can do our TV licenses, we can renew our post boxes. You can access information online about the election. You can get up-to-date information um, 
unemployment and tax details can be added and captured online. And then obviously there's educational publications and guidelines and you can go and print out past papers, etc. So all these have made our life easier and sources more accessible. So the advantages, the government has helped improve communication. It's got more access to services. You don't have to stand in queues or travel long distances. You get immediate feedback. Um, all the information is up to date. And the sites can also be accessed using your smartphones. And a very, very good point, Grade 12, is that it promotes green computing. Now, obviously, with advantages, you get disadvantages. And the main disadvantage is that not everybody in this country has internet access. Okay? The initial cost to the government was quite expensive. Some people are nervous about going online and um, putting out personal details. If the server is down, you can't access the services that you need. And there are still people who prefer to deal face to face with other people. Okay, what do we need to get connected? People are communicating with each other every single day via the internet. So we use it to communicate via email, social networks. We can shop online. We can check the, the weather. We can do business. So there are two basic types of internet connections, grade 12s. One is cabled, and an example of cabled is ADSL. And the second is wireless connection, like 3G and satellite. So now before we can get an internet connection, we need an ISP. And if you remember from grade 11 and 10, it is an internet service provider. And it's a company that gives you access to the internet for a monthly fee. So once we've got an ISP, we need to find out what broadband is and what bandwidth is. Now broadband is a high speed, high bandwidth connection to the internet like ADSL and 3G. And bandwidth is how much data we can transfer from one place to another in a given time period. And you often hear people complaining that their bandwidth is slow. It's because their lines are slow and they don't have um, high, enough high enough bandwidth to get their data to download from one place to another. Another thing we need to get um, connected to the internet is a modem or a router, okay? A modem is a device that is used to connect a computer to the internet via a phone line. I don't think very many people use dial-up anymore. And then a router is a device that is used to connect two networks together. So now, if you want an ADSL line, you get an ADSL modem router. And they are two devices combined. It's basically a normal router with an ADSL modem built into the device. And um, it can connect directly to your network or computer and to a telephone line. Now, the wired connections, you've got ADSL. It is the most commonly used wired, um, wired connection. It's a permanent digital connection to the internet that works through a fixed landline. You need an ADSL modem, and um, you have different speeds. For instance, a 4 megabyte line will give you a download speed of 4096 kilobytes per second and an upload speed of 512 kilobytes per second. Now, grade 12, you might wonder why there are two different figures quoted. The first figure, and it's always the highest one, is for your downloading. And you always need a higher speed and a higher bandwidth to download. If you think about downloading something from YouTube, it takes quite a long time. And it takes a lot quicker to upload something. That's why you need less kilobytes to upload something. So the advantages and disadvantages of an ADSL are you can make and receive calls while you are on the internet. It is a permanent connection, so there's no need to dial up. And it's less expensive than a wireless connection. So now the disadvantages is you may not have ADSL in all the areas. And the data speed may be limited by your physical location. So let's look at wireless connections now. There's two basic types of wireless technologies. 
We've got cellular technology, which means connecting via your cell phone, and we've got 3G and 4G. And then we now have a dedicated Wi-Fi technology, such as iBurst or NeoTel. So let's look at 3G, 4G, or now LTE, which stands for long-term evolution. Um, it's implemented by a cellular communications company like Vodacom or MTN. And you can connect directly to the internet via your cell phone, or you can use a 3G modem or dongle with your laptop. Let's look at iBurst or NeoTel. These networks can only be accessed by a modem supplied by the above companies, and coverage is limited and is dependent on where the radio towers are placed. The advantages and disadvantages of mobile access is that you can access the internet wherever you are in the world, no matter what time of day it is. You can use your smartphone or tablet to access the internet. There are no cables involved in connecting to the internet. But one of the disadvantages are, is again, poor coverage, depending on where you are. And it is more expensive per megabyte than cabled access. So let's look at some facts about Wi-Fi. It's a way of connecting to an existing internet connection wirelessly. Multiple devices can connect to a single Wi-Fi access point. It provides faster data transfer at a lower cost. Um, a Wi-Fi connection at home will allow your mobile device to have a faster, cheaper connection. And your mobile co device can detect Wi-Fi wi networks wherever you are. You will have noticed that if you go to a restaurant or to you sitting in the airport, your phone will pick up the Wi-Fi spots available and depending on where you are, you can access it via a code. And um, your Wi-Fi will be remembered. What happens is that your phone remembers the networks that you were connected to. Um, it has a memory of the Wi-Fi's that you've been on. And then we've discussed hot, hot spots and access points before, grade 12s and grade 11. And um, these are places where there is access to the internet via Wi-Fi, okay? It is called a hotspot or access um, point. Most are protected by a password, but some allow you to access the Wi-Fi for free for a certain amount of time, um, and then you have a certain amount of megabytes that you can download. Um, otherwise, you need to get the password from the place that you are at, and they might charge you per hour or how much you download in that hour. So let's recap. There are two types of internet connections. We've got wireless, and within your wireless, you have cellular technology, which is 3G or 4G LTE. And you can have a dedicated Wi-Fi that is um, supplied through iBurst or NeoTel. Then with a wired connection, we have got ADSL, and you can use your mobile device to connect via Wi-Fi to the ADSL and internet. And that's the end of our lesson on network technologies. Thank you, grade 12s. Goodbye.